Good morning, church. As you can see, we have been busy, busy, busy around here trying to get our stage ready for BBS. Whoa, 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 stop. What in the world? Stop. Who, what? There is a man-eating bird after me. Uh, this bird? Uh, you do know uh, it's a stuffed animal, right? It's stuffed all right. It's about to be stuffed with me. No, I mean, it's stuffed. It's a toy. No. <gasps> ah, he bit me. Look, he bit my finger off. Look, he bit my finger off. He bit me, he okay, bit me, he bit okay, me, he bit okay, me. Okay. Wow, I'm healed. It's a miracle. Really? Who are you? I'm shipwrecked, Sally. I've been shipwrecked on this island forever. I need to be rescued. Really? Rescued from what? Well, I'm just so lonely. It's just me and this dumb bird. And, and I worry so much because there's just bananas and pineapples and what happens if I run out? And sometimes I'm not so good because I'm mean to the bird. And... Well, I feel so powerless being stuck on this island, and I just, like, struggle. Can you rescue me? No. I can't rescue you. But I know someone who can. Really? Who? Pizza. She can rescue you from all your worries, from all your wrongs, from I'm feeling powerless. Things that you struggle with. Well, wh wh where, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? If you'll come back here, right here on this island, at 9 a.m. tomorrow, I'll introduce him to you, right here. Yeah, like, where else am I going to be tomorrow morning, except for this <laughs> island? I told you, you stupid bird, this wasn't going to work. We're never going to get rescued from this island. I am so sick of bananas and pineapples, well, bananas, bananas and pineapples, like bananas and pineapples. Like Sally, you come back here tomorrow morning. We have BBS starting, shipwreck, Jesus rescued. We are going to be teaching the kids how they can be rescued by Jesus for eternity. Tomorrow morning, starting at 9 a.m. Now, get here early. Our registrations are all even bigger than they were the last year and the year before and the year before. So we are already getting packed out around here. So if you have not registered, get online and get registered. Now, with that said, that means you need help. We are having a record registration. If you are a teen or an adult who is available from 9 to 12, more like 8.30 to 12.30, Monday through Friday this week, please come down to Children's Ministry and see me. We need you. We want to see as many kids come to know the Lord this week. We want to reach out to families here in Stafford, and we're going to be doing that through Shipwreck BBS, Jesus Rescued. Thank you. Amen. Wow. I really hope that Shipwreck Sally will come back tomorrow because she is really wound up tight. But you know, I guess being on an island, shipwrecked all by herself, uh, would do that to a person. When I think, though, uh, of castaways on an island, immediately I think of this. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. A tale of fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man. The skipper brave and true. Five passengers that sailed that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. See, I did it, Shirley. There you go. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. The minnow would be lost. You can join in. It's all right. The ship set ground on the shore of this uncharted desert isle with Gilligan, the skipper too, the millionaire and his wife, the movie star and the rest, the professor and Gil Marianne, all on Gilligan's Isle. That's it. 
I, I'm going to keep my day job, Pastor Chuck. That's, there's, there's no doubt about that. But I, you know, I think, now I asked you the first, how many of you watch Gilligan's Island? No, don't raise, you're raising your hand to, that's not, you listen to the whole question. First run when it came out, 1964 to 67. So you're going to ask, all right. How many of you, like myself, a child of the 70s, watched it in reruns? And then how many of you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, Gilligan's Island? Well, you know, Gil Gilligan was just, if not for Gilligan, they would have gotten off that island a lot sooner. <laughs> they, they had the professor. They, they had the know-how. And indeed, he was going to get on time after time after time. The professor was ready to get him off the island. And then Gilligan. Couldn't, you know, as, as, I, as I thought about this week's theme, for Vacation Bible, I couldn't help but think about the, the castaways on Gilligan's Island. And we, we laugh about sort of that funny, fake scenario of, of a comedy series so long ago. But then you think of, about the theme, Jesus rescues. And you think about that word rescue. And I, I couldn't help but think about the amazing, really nothing short of miraculous rescue that took place in Thailand this month. What started out on June 23rd of 12, 12 boys of a soccer team and their 25 year old coach after practice thought we'll go explore in a cave. That, that sounds like a good idea except for the water that would rise up and would block the entrance 2.5 miles into that cave. And so no way of escape other than back through water. Nine days later, they were finally discovered. For, can you imagine being a parent, a grandparent? Can you imagine uh, being someone that, not knowing where this team was for nine days? And then finally, on, on July 3rd, they were discovered in that cave, but no way to get out. The water too, too deep, and in fact, none of the boys could swim. So how are we going to get them out? And they began to give swimming lessons. They tried to make a rescue one Navy SEAL from Thailand actually died in the process. And then over time, the oxygen levels in, in that cave began to deplete so, so low that there was a concern, even if they were to be able to figure a way to do the impossible, that there would simply be no oxygen left in the cave. And when they got there, that all of the boys and their coach would be dead. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I, I would just admit that as I'm watching this story unfold, particularly as I'm hearing the oxygen levels that are being depleted, the, the just horrific circumstances that they found themselves in, not being able to get to them and not being able to swim. Oh, ye of little faith, but I, I thought, this is not going to end good. Now, now, maybe you didn't have that little faith. Maybe, maybe you had, but I, I just ran through my mind, man, I, I can't believe it's going to end this way. But you know, God is a God bigger than we could ever imagine. And what was unimaginable for us was just so easy for him. And 17 days later, the last of the four boys and their coach were brought out safely from that cave. Wow. Talk about a God who rescues. We, we may never face that type of situation that those Thai boys faced. But I can guarantee you this morning that we're facing our own situations that we need to be rescued from just as every bit as those boys. Maybe it's rescue that y your marriage needs. Maybe it's rescue that your kids need. Maybe it's a rescue that your finances need. Maybe it's a rescue that your health needs. Maybe it's a rescue that relationships need. It, it, 
to work or in the community. Maybe it's a spiritual rescue for your very soul. Maybe it's a rescue from your emotions of anger and anxiety and worry and doubt. We all need to be rescued. It's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when. And when we need to be rescued, we need to remember to look to Jesus. Look to Jesus for Jesus rescues. That, that's the message not just for today, that's the message not just for this week at Vacation Bible School, but that's the message for our life each and every day, no matter what circumstance, the circumstances that we see coming. And the circumstances of life that we could have never predicted and never saw coming. But yet we have one who not only sees, who not only knows, but he is a God who is mighty to rescue. He is a God who is mighty to save. This morning as we kick off Vacation Bible School and the theme, the next five days the kids are going to be learning these five truths. Starting tomorrow, when you are lonely... Jesus rescues. You ever get lonely? Ever feel lonely? E- even when you're, you're in a crowd? Do you ever feel alone in this world? Jesus rescues. The Lord will hold me close, Psalm 2710. Day two, w- when you worry, Jesus rescues. You ever worry? Ever get concerned? Ever get anxious about anything? When you worry, Jesus rescues. The Lord comes to the rescue each time, Psalm 34, 19. Day three, when you struggle, Jesus rescues. You ever struggle with anything? Struggling with anything right now? I I know I do. If we were honest with ourselves, every day we, we struggle with something. Whether it's our flesh, whether it's outside forces, whether it's our spirit, whatever, it, when we struggle, Jesus rescues. Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we just need to be still when we struggle. When the, when the wind is against us. Stop rowing and let Jesus into the boat. Day four, when you do wrong, Jesus rescues. How many of you have done something or will do something wrong today? How many of you just did not want to admit that you are going to do something wrong today? Every hand should have gone up. There's not not a single day that goes by where we don't don't do something wrong. We, We call that biblically sin. Maybe something that we should have done and didn't do. Maybe something that we did and shouldn't have done. Our thoughts, our motives, our attitudes, everything. When we mess up, when we sin, when we do something wrong, Jesus rescues. Take heart, Jesus says, because I have overcome the world, John 16, 33. That's perhaps the greatest rescue that we could ever have is that Jesus Christ would come to this world and rescue us from something we absolutely positively could not rescue ourselves from just like those boys in the cave there was absolutely no way that they could rescue themselves they needed somebody to rescue them that's the way we are as sinners and there's only one who is the rescuer there's only one who is the deliverer there's only one who is the savior and his name is Jesus. Day five, when you are powerless, Jesus rescues. Do you ever feel powerless? Do you ever feel like, I just, I can't do anything. I, I don't have it anymore. I can't, I just, I've tried and tried. And tried. I just can't. Do you ever feel powerless? When you do, 
Not if you do, when you do. Look to Jesus, because Jesus rescues. Ephesians 1, 19, 20. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Jesus rescues. When you need to be rescued, look unto Jesus. Jesus rescues you. If you have your copy of God's Word this morning, I invite you to, to be turning to Psalm chapter 109. Psalm 109, as we read from verses 21 to 31, if you're able to stand this morning as you're turning there, Psalm 109. This is a Psalm of David. If you read this Psalm from beginning to end, you, you will see that David just kind of is almost all over the place, but not really. This is what's known as an imprecatory Psalm. In most of the passage before we get to verse 21 David is basically talking about his enemies and asking God to rain down judgment upon his enemies David would have known something about enemies not only from King Saul who he would take the place of but even within his own family of his son Absalom and others who would betray him and King David would write this psalm and in the midst of this psalm, uh, we get to verse 20. It's sort of a transition verse. May those curses become the Lord's punishment for my accusers who speak evil of me. And then we get to verse 21. And David begins to pour out his heart about a God who will rescue, a God who will save, a God who will deliver. And this morning, whether you're facing circumstances of your own, Maybe they're of your own doing. Maybe they came out of the blue and you had nothing to do with them. Maybe you expected them. Maybe you didn't. Maybe they're small and you think insignificant. Maybe they're huge and you don't know how in the world am I ever going to be able to get out of the situation that I find myself in. When we get to verse 21, we'll read through verse 31, but we'll come back and really just hone in on verse 21 this morning. King David writes, but deal well with me, O sovereign Lord, for the sake of your own reputation. Rescue me because you are so faithful and good. For I am poor and needy. My heart is full of pain. And I am fading like a shadow at dusk. I am brushed off like a locust. My knees are weak from fasting and I am skin and bone. I'm a joke to people everywhere. When they see me, they shake their heads in scorn. Help me, O Lord my God, save me because of your unfailing love. Let them see that this is your doing, that you yourself have done it, Lord. Then let them curse me if they like, but you will bless me. When they attack me, they will be disgraced, but I, your servant, will go right on rejoicing. May my accusers be clothed with disgrace. May their humiliation cover them like a cloak, but I will give repeated thanks to the Lord, praising him to everyone. For he stands ready beside the needy, ready to save them from those who condemn them. Father God, we thank you this morning that you are mighty to save, that you are mighty to rescue. That Father, you not only see us in our times of distress, you not only see us in our struggles and in our worry, you not only see us in our wrongs, but Father, you can rescue out of any danger that we find ourselves in. Father, I pray this morning that you would speak to our hearts and to our minds that we might be reminded that Jesus rescues. And Father, apply this to our life that no matter what we face even today, that we would know that you are our great rescuer. You are our great deliverer. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Folks, verse 21 King David lays out the reasons why God does what he does. Reading from the New Living Translation this morning, David writes, But deal well with me, O sovereign Lord, for the sake of your own reputation. Let's unpack that because there's just a lot in there. But deal well with me. Have you ever in life, maybe it's in business, maybe it's at your job, at work with your boss, Maybe it's with the government, maybe it's with a best friend who you thought was a best friend, maybe it was uh, e even in your marriage. Have you ever had somebody that just flat out didn't deal well with you? That just, you know, you, maybe you, you struck up a business deal 
and, and you walked away from that deal, and you thought, that's, that's a great deal, and then you got a little ways removed from that, and you began to look and, and go, man, I, I can't believe I fell for it. That, they just ripped me off. They did not deal well with me. How many of you have ever felt like somebody somewhere just didn't deal right with you? You ever had that experience? I think we've all had that experience because, because we live in a fallen world. And when we deal with people, we deal with people who are still fallen and broken. And even as Christians, we sometimes can deal with others in a place of our own brokenness. And so as we deal with one another, there will be times in our life, whether it's within the church or within the secular world in particular, where people just flat out don't deal well with us. But God ain't like that. That's not who God is. You see, God is a God of character, and a God of integrity, and a God who will always, 100% of the time, deal well with us. See, 90% in our culture, that's kind of above the mark. If you were a business and you got a 90% rating from the Better Business Bureau, you'd be like, man, that, that's great. Look at, God's a not, not a 90% God. God's a 100% God that deals with us 100% of the time well. And why does he do that? Because that's who he is. Deal well with me. And then David said, oh, sovereign Lord, or Lord God. And sometimes we see that word sovereign. And we go, wait a minute, what, what do you mean sovereign? I, I thought God's sovereign, but we're for, Folks, sometimes we get all caught up in words. And we miss the significance of what God is trying to do in our life. God is a sovereign God. What does that mean? That he's God and we're not. That he's on the throne and we're not. That he is all seen, all knowing, and all powerful, and we're not. Do we have freedom and responsibility? Absolutely. Brenda, back in, in seminary, I, I still give her credit for this. It's, I, I can't even begin to, to fathom it. And maybe you've tried to, to work those two out. God is sovereign and, and we're free, responsible creatures. If you know how those two work together, let me know and we'll write a book and we'll go ahead and make a lot of money and pay for the building next door. But that's a question that has eluded the best minds throughout Christian history. But Brenda came up with this analogy, and, and since we're, we've got a, a ship theme going on here, how many of you have ever been on a cruise? How many of you would like to go on a cruise? But not, how, how many of you would like to go on a cruise this No, no. right now, no, after vacation Bible school. You know, on the cruise ship, you've got a lot of freedom to move about the cruise ship. Do you know you can be up on deck, you can be in your room, you can be all over the place you know, it, on that cruise ship. But as that cruise ship is going, one place that, that you're really not supposed to be because it's not your place is right here. Because there's a captain of that boat. And you've got a lot of freedom on that cruise ship. But that captain is the captain of the ship. And he's steering the ship where he wants it to be. Uh, we may go through choppy waters. We may go through things that we simply do not understand, this side of heaven. But we have one who is behind the wheel. And if you're behind the wheel, you better move because you're in the wrong spot. Because God is sovereign. And I don't know about you this morning, but that's good news. Why is it good news? Because God is not up in the heavens looking down on us and going, I, I know what you're going through. I, I know you're in a tough spot. I would really love to be able to help you out, but my hands are tied. Folks, no one ties the hands of the sovereign God. And when we pray, we do not pray to a God who is impotent. We pray to a God who is omnipotent, 
We pray to a God who can do whatever he wants in the heavens and on earth because he is, as the model of the Lord's Prayer tells us, our Father who art in heaven. He is our Father who sees and knows what is best for us, and he is not a God of second best. He is a God who will always deal well with his children because he is our Father who is sovereign and in heaven, but yet through his spirit walks with us day by day by day. That's why David could call out to God, but deal well with me, O sovereign Lord. But don't miss this. For the sake of your own reputation. What does that mean? We, we've sung about it this morning. For the sake of his name. See, folks, when he deals with us, yes, we get the benefit. We get the blessing of that. But don't miss this. That when God does what he does, he does not do it ultimately for us that is man-centered. He does it for his glory. He does it for his name. And if the spotlight ever gets off of God and gets onto us as his creatures instead of the creator, then the spotlight is in the wrong place. Because as Pastor John reminds us often, it's not about us. It's all about Jesus. And David could cry out, for the sake of your reputation, for the sake of your name, for the sake of your glory, that when we are rescued, when we are delivered, it's ultimately not about us, but it should all go back to the glory of God and to his name. Rescue me, David says, because why you are so faithful and good, literally because of your faithful love and your mercy. See, we are rescued, not because of anything we could do. Indeed, we positively, absolutely could not rescue ourselves. Just like those boys in that cave. There is no goodness in us that would warrant that we would be rescued. There is no worth in us, in and of ourselves, that, warrant, that would warrant that we would be rescued. It's all because of God and his love for you and for me and for this world. For God so loved the world that he gave as, as the one and only rescuer the one and only Savior, he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's because of his great love for sinners like us who are in desperate need of being rescued. It's because of his children that day by day get into struggles and get into trouble and worry that God is a God who continually rescues us. Not because of us, but because of him. Because of his goodness. Because of his faithfulness. We sang about it, did we not, just a moment ago. Great is my faithfulness. That'd be a short song. be a false song great great is his faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning in your mercies i see all i have needed his hand has provided great is his faithfulness lord unto me when you need to be rescued not if, but when. God not only sees, God not only knows, but God will move into action for his great name, for the reputation of his glory, and because he is good, and he is faithful, and he is merciful, and he is gracious this morning some of you are here and you need to be rescued spiritually you never called upon Jesus to rescue you 
you're sinking deep in sin with no way out. The only way is to simply call out to Jesus. Jesus, rescue me. And when we call out his name, he says, I will rescue. I will deliver. For some of you this morning, Christian, you're entangled in sin that so easily entangles. You're struggling. You're worrying. You're fretting. Whatever it is. And Jesus is waiting for you to simply call out to him. Rescue me. Save me. Deliver me. This morning, God is a God of his promise. God is a good, good father. Our father who art in heaven. Call through your son, Jesus, to rescue you today. He's waiting. He's ready. Would you but cry out? this morning, right now, whatever circumstance of life you find yourself in, Jesus, rescue me today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you this morning that Jesus is still rescuing. He's rescuing sinners from sin, from Satan, and from death by repenting and believing the gospel. Father, this morning, no doubt in the sanctuary this size, and that there are some here this morning who have never truly been rescued from sin, from Satan, and from the grave. They've never repented and believed the gospel. Maybe they've heard the gospel. Maybe they've grown up in church. Maybe they went to vacation Bible school as a kid. Maybe they go to Sunday school, but they've never truly cried out in faith Jesus, rescue me. Jesus, save me. And today is the day that they simply would call out in faith. Father, I pray that you open hearts and minds this morning, that, that you, by your Spirit, would draw them to the cross of the empty tomb, that they might cry out, Jesus, rescue me today. For Christians this morning, whatever circumstance of life that you find yourself in, when you need to be rescued, and today you need to be rescued from something, Jesus is waiting you to simply call out, Jesus, I can't do it. I've tried all that I got. Jesus, rescue me today. Father, I pray this morning that you'd give each and every one of us even the power to call out to you. Father, give us the words. Give us the heart. Help us not to wait till tomorrow for rescue, but to call out today. For you are faithful to your promises. Father, as your spirit moves, as we respond to you this morning, might we see you move in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand together, as we sing, I'll be here at the front. The altars are open. Some of our deacons will be at the back for a time of extended prayer if you need to go to another room. As God's spirit moves this morning, simply call out, Jesus, rescue me. Whatever it is today, he knows, he sees, and he wants to rescue, if you'll but call on his name.
name is wonderful. He is the mighty king, master of everything, even master of our life today. And he is mighty to save. He is mighty to rescue. So no matter what it is that we need to be rescued from even today, might we call upon his mighty good name. And he will be faithful to his promises. Wherever our feet might take us this week, whether they're vacation Bible school or whether they're up to northern Virginia, to the Pentagon or Quantico, wherever it might be, as we go, might we lift up his name, and as his name is lifted up, he will draw people unto himself for deliverance, for rescue, for salvation. Thank you for being here this morning, being a part of what God continues to do in and through uh, the people of Ramus Baptist Church. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to have a uh, farewell fellowship luncheon for the Mortons immediately after our prayer and closing song. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Danny if he would pray uh, for that luncheon as well. And as you're taking the hand of the person standing beside you, if you are able to come through the doors on my far right and far left and navigate down the back stairway into the fellowship hall, that would be greatly appreciated. We've got uh, a lot of decorations in the main hallway, but if we can alleviate some of that traffic and have some of it go down these two stairwells, there will be chicken and other goodies down there awaiting. And so without further ado, uh, Brother Dan. just also uh, we ask you to bless uh, the Mortons as they leave this endeavor and go on to another church Lord God that you just bless them and, and bless your kingdom tenfold Lord that you may, may do mighty works as you travel from Ramos we keep you in your presence Lord again we bless ask you to bless this food bless the hands they prepare and give us a good day this week Help, help them learn about you, Lord, and bless it to you. In your name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.